I know what you're thinking, this is a great looking dust shoe. <laughs> As the second part in the CNC dust management series, today I'm sharing with you my new CNC dust boot, the Dust Jet. Stick around for all the details. Now this is the second in a series of dust management videos for the Shape Oco and Nomad. And in the last one I shared a V-wheel dust cover strategy to keep your wheels free of debris, allowing your gantry to move without impediments and for you to produce the best results possible. Of course it's still up to your toolpath and fixturing and uh, you just won't be able to blame it on your machine. Today we're going to talk about dust shoots or dust boots or CNC dust collection. They come in hundreds of variations and really haven't evolved much all since the invention back in 1972, 74. Now I've never been satisfied with any of the dust shoes I've used. For me they're, they're just a necessary evil of subtractive manufacturing. For one, they're a visual obstruction to seeing or recording uh, what the machine is doing and they just don't work great for every milling operation. That said, they can be a big help to the air quality of your shop and the time you spend cleaning and maintaining your machine. As well, a good dust collection will prolong the effectiveness of the V-Wheel dust covers and that makes me happy. Recently, I upgraded my Z-axis and Makita router to a 2.2 kilowatt brushless spindle. The thing is amazing and I couldn't be happier with the performance, the torque, and the silence that I've gained. I'll cover those details in the next video. As a result of the upgrade, I wanted to take a stab at designing a better dust shoe, and one that's smarter, meets my needs of course, and is compatible with the new spindle. These days it seems dust shoes are one of the first projects people make with their CNC's, and as a result there's no shortage of designs, plans, or prior art to reference. In doing just that, I found a dust collector and safety guard, granted way back in 1974, and having since expired, as well as a reference for every other design since then, I glossed over the design for reference. Single arm, adjustable height, enclosed dust chamber, vacuum hose, dust brush, all the characteristics of a good dust shoe. Now the hard part is making a good design. The first thing I did was define the criteria that I wanted to incorporate into my design. First, I wanted to minimize any structural hardware required to mount the shoe to the Z gantry. Second, I wanted to ensure that the vacuum line didn't obstruct visibility to the work area. Third, I wanted to ensure adequate vacuum line volume. And fourth, I want to use a rigid vacuum line as a boom to keep the vacuum line out of the way of the spindle. With that, I hit Fusion 360 to see what I could come up with. In my design I chose to use a 50 millimeter acrylic vacuum tube. This would provide great volume and be used as the shoe mount, the vacuum line boom and adjustable hardware all in one. What? I just solved all my requirements, now I have to make it look pretty. Designing around the 50 millimeter acrylic tube, I knew I wanted a large diameter vacuum chamber. I landed on around 100 millimeters. That's a 4 inch radius at the spindle. This makes for a large viewing area that doesn't obstruct the cutting area. After several iterations on connecting and designing the two diameters at a fixed distance, I decided I would port the vacuum under the shoe to the cut area. Focus the suction at the end mill. The port creates a venturi which completes the vacuum chamber. I created a seamless cut plate and added a brush channel to allow for removable brush strips, making it easy to swap out one, two, or three inch lengths. This allows it to work with shallow and deep plunging tool paths. The shoe was milled from 12 millimeter acrylic using a 1 8 inch single O flute flat end mill at a 40 thou depth of cut and 40 inches per minute. The venturi and top flange were 3D printed in ABS with a 0.25 layer height and 40% infill. The machine plate was laser cut and threaded brass inserts brought it all together. The next part was to find a quick release tube clamp for the acrylic tube. The search didn't yield much and after trying a few different stage lighting uh, quick release clamps just didn't feel right. I decided to design my own clamp. It took some time and while I really liked my design, the test with resin printed prototypes ended up being problematic. The resin was too rigid. When it cured, it eventually broke under the repeated pressure of opening and closing it, which was necessary to adjust the height. I decided to try FDM printing and worked with various filaments, including TPU, ABS, nylon hips, polycarbonate, and they all failed at one point or another. Until I found NinjaFlex Armadillo. It's a hard TPU that makes it rigid yet slightly flexible. 
This stuff is indestructible, but very pricey. So at that point, I had a solution. It worked great, but the cost was higher than made sense for me. And this would work, but I wanted something better. While continuing the search, I located some barbell clamps, believe it or not. The thought was that I could modify them to work. I ordered a couple, tweaked them with an armadillo mount plate and threaded brass inserts. And these things are awesome and even have a secondary lock tab, which works great. Plus, they come in several colors to match your style. The last thing required was to add a mount bracket to my z-axis. I milled this from 3 millimeter 6061 aluminum and installed it using two M4 cap head bolts. Finally, I installed the acrylic tube, attached the shoe, and connected the vacuum line, and this thing looks great and performs equally well. I'm so happy with it, I had to give it a name. The Dust Jet. And now for some obligatory glamour shots. <laughs> And with that, the episode was over. That's it for the second part in this series. If you like the boot, check out my webpage for more info on the kits, or head over to thingiverse.diy.engineering if all you want is the models. If this video was useful, subscribe to the channel, then click that bell to get notified when I post new content. Stay tuned for more in this series as we have some very special and cool upcoming projects. Let's end this thing. I got things to do and places to go. Be safe, have fun. I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. Open up the door, it's Dave!